Hello and welcome back to part 4 of my Top Down Survivor tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be spawning the enemies in using an enemy spawner. If you remember from the last video in the series, we managed to make this enemy. Um, the enemy manages to track towards the player. Now we do have one minor issue because we had to basically uh, choose the player um, when the enemy was already on the scene. So we're going to have to solve that problem. But let's start with problem one, which is just getting the enemies spawning after a set length of time somewhere on the scene. To do that, I'm actually going to delete this enemy from our scene right now. So please do that. Then we're going to create ourselves a brand new scene and it's just going to be just a basic 2D scene with a node 2D. I'm going to rename this to enemy underscore spawner. Um, then we're going to use this to spawn in enemies at the position of this spawn when we place it on the scene. Um, one thing I'm going to want to do is uh, just save this scene, make sure I'm saving it in scenes and it's got the right name. Um, one thing I'm going to want to do is just add a timer to this so that we can spawn after a certain length of time. So just right click on the enemy spawner and add a child of timer. Timers are really cool um, things because you can set them to auto start on the right hand side. So um, when this timer's on, click on auto start. Um, the current wait time is only one second. We'll leave that as it is. We can change that as um, at runtime even in code or we could change it right now depending on how often we'd like to spawn. The cool thing about the timer is that it's got an automatic node timeout signal that gets sent and you can hook your code up to that really easily. To do that, I'm going to add a piece of code to my enemy spawner. Just clicking on the plus up here for the to add a piece of code. It's going to be called enemy spawner and it is um, a default node, it inherits node 2D but it really doesn't matter. The um, location, however, shouldn't be in scenes so I'm going to change that again just going back up into scripts to put all my scripts in the same place to keep things neat. I'm going to click create right now and then we basically don't really need anything in here so I'm going to get rid of everything inside of there and just save that right now. The timer node, um, we need to hook up to this script. So if we click back on the timer again inside the enemy spawner and double click this timeout signal uh, under the node tab up in the inspector there, we can connect it to um, any script that this is visible to. So um, there is the enemy spawner script that we just made. The receiver method is going to be called on timer time eight. Um, in Godot 4.2 and above, you can pick the signal that you, the, the piece of code that you'd like to use. So if you do actually have a signal already, you can choose this. Otherwise, just click on connect. Then um, to test this, rather than just trust me, um, what we can print is um, something, a small message like timeout, and um, just save that code. If we go back to our level now and we put ourselves um, in 2D, if we put ourselves an enemy spawner uh, scene on here, so this enemy spawner scene, just going to drop that over to the right hand side and pop it in here. What we should see when we run this code is that we should see every second, we should see this timeout message getting printed out to the console down here, you can see. So that we know that that piece of code is actually firing, it's triggering every single second. We just need to make it spawn an enemy instead of printing timeout. So let's just go back to our enemy spawner and open up our script. We're going to have to reference which scene we'd like to spawn in. So there's a couple of ways of doing it. Um, I quite like to do the um, export variable. What that does, we've seen it in the previous uh, video, what it does is it allows us to choose for every single um, every single instance. We get to choose what we want to do. We did it with the player earlier on when the enemy referenced the player. So we're just going to say add export in order to get that reference variable. And we're going to say var and we're going to say um, enemy underscore prefab. Uh, then uh, we're going to force this to be a packed scene type. The uh, Saving that now, what you'll see inside of our enemy spawner up here in the inspector, you'll see the opportunity to choose the prefab that we would like to spawn in or that we want this enemy spawner to spawn in. And that's as simple as just using the drop down, clicking load, going into scenes and finding the enemy scene and adding that in. So now that's sort of the default packed scene that will get spawned um, when we reference this variable. So to spawn it in, really, really simple. We're just going to uh, get rid of this 
print timeout right now because uh, we don't need that anymore. I'm going to be a good boy and um, add in some comments as well. So spawn an enemy. So I know what I'm actually doing. The uh, spawning is pretty simple. I create a variable to hold the temporary enemy, and then you just use the enemy prefab dot instantiate function on that enemy prefab. That will create a blank. Uh, copy of the enemy prefab, whatever was in here, and store that in enemy. The simple thing we need to do right now is just add that new enemy that we just added straight into the scene. Now what it'll do is it'll add it on as a child of the enemy spawner. So running this uh, shows us our very first curly problem. So as soon as we spawn in our enemy, what we've got here, I'm just going to stop the uh, game, but what we've got here is an instance where it's popped up an error where there's a problem. Now the cursor's even been put over where the problem is, so the problem is we spawn in one of these enemies. The enemy has an enemy.gd script on it, and that enemy.gd script has to know who the player is. Remember in the last video we actually just hard coded that, we dragged um, the player over onto the export variable so that we could actually choose where the player is. So this is one of the issues, this is one of the problems. Now what we can do um, right here is we can test our code without having to worry about it. So I do want us to do this just because it's a good practice. So if we um, comment out that line, and then we can actually comment out these two lines as well. You can do that with control and question mark if you want to comment multiple lines. So it has a move and slide, but the value for velocity hasn't been set. So it shouldn't actually move, but it shouldn't also error as well. So I'm going to save this and let's test it again. So running this, we should get one uh, snowman every single time. Um, the reason that they're shooting off like this, I believe, is just because they're spawning in exactly the same location and velocity hasn't been set. So how can we go about making sure that when we spawn in a, an enemy as a child of this enemy spawner, it's able to see this player or get a reference to this player? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it. So. Um, what we could do, so we have this situation where we have a spawner and he's going to pop an enemy into the scene. Now, what we could do is we get this enemy to try and find the player instance on the scene. We could do that by something like maybe um, having the player inside of a, a group so that it can find something within that group. We could also try and use the tree, um, the hierarchy, to try and reference it based on where it is within the tree. However, one of the ways that's maybe the easiest is the spawner is already on the scene and if the spawner knows who the player is, then what the spawner can do is when the spawner spawns in an enemy, the spawner can tell the enemy who the player is so that the player can have some sort of player or a target variable inside of its code so that um, when the spawner spawns in, we have an instance to it, we can just tell the uh, enemy who the target is and then it should be able to track it. So what that looks like in code is basically uh, if we go to the code for the enemy spawner, so I'm going to go to the enemy spawner here, click on the code right now and then um, we're going to have to add in um, effectively what we had inside of the player. We've got an export variable that we're going to call target. Um, this is just going to be an, uh, sorry, a node 2D so that we're able to reference um, anything we want. This is, by the way, on the enemy spawner. If I go back to my level now, what we should see is if I click on the enemy spawner because it's sa saved, the target um, can be assigned just like it was when it was on the enemy. So we click assign and we choose player and say OK. That means that this enemy spawner now has always got a reference to the target, the player, um, as it were. The next thing we want to do inside of the enemy script, we got rid of this because um, it was an export variable we had to assign. We couldn't do that through code. So what we're going to do is get rid of all of that, but just leave it as var player. 
That leaves that node exactly as it was before. We can uncomment this code as we did before. So a control question mark will uncomment multiple lines of code. And we're back to the code we had before. This variable, however, is not set until uh, we spawn in. So this isn't automatically set when the player, sorry, when the enemy comes in. So how do we do that? Well, all we'll need to do is make sure that when we're in the enemy spawner, and the enemy spawns, the enemy spawner spawns in an enemy right here, we want to also, for this new instance, this new enemy, we want to also set what the uh, player is for this. So we can say enemy dot player, and we make it equal to target. So we set that. So that should be uh, it if I just look back again. So I did call this player and therefore when we are spawning things in through this script, we're setting that variable to player and setting equal to the target in here. Um, you can choose whether you want to call them both target. It really doesn't matter. This could also be target. I left it as player because then I didn't need to change any other code in there. Let's test this out. So running this uh, behaves exactly as expected. We've got uh, every second we're spawning in one of the snowmen and they're continuing to spawn all the time. They actually move really, really fast, which makes it quite hard. So I may slow that down uh, in a future video. But that's the enemy spawner and we've solved one of the biggest problems in game design, which is how different objects on a scene can reference other objects on that scene. So I hope you're enjoying the video series and stick with it. We'll be back in the next one where we'll start actually taking some damage and shooting some bullets at these things.